guys welcome back to my channel so today we are not cooking we're gonna do a little bit of theory and i just thought i would do a little video for you guys with all of my basic kitchen essential utensils or essential kitchen utensils however you want to word it um, when you are following recipes or when i'm creating recipes it's important that you follow it as closely as possible because however the person has created that recipe that is how you get the flavor that they intend for you to have in doing so it's also important that you have the right equipment as well i hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll just get into it so this is taking me out of the screen but this is my wooden chopping board you definitely need a chopping board because you don't want to be chopping up your goods on the counter do you i've got a big wooden one and then i've also got a set of like colored ones just to be a bit hygienic so it's got red for me blue for fish green for vegetables and white for like cooked food or like dry food or whatever so yeah you definitely need a good good chopping board have one obviously every time you change the type of product that you're using it for you give it a good wash and a clean you can get glass ones plastic ones i just like the aesthetic of a wooden chopping board so this is a i call it a vegetable peeler you can use it to peel your carrots your turnips and your parsnips whatever my parents are very very jamaican i myself i believe i'm very jamaican and i'm used to peeling things like this with a, like if this was a small knife and you would do like this with a knife that's just how i was taught but that is not necessarily safe i don't want to encourage you guys to do that if you're not comfortable doing that and you're like a newbie definitely get one of these and keep it safe So these are two, oh, I'm gonna put on the screen what you would call these, I don't actually remember, but they're two what I call good knives. They're large, they're sharp, you have to make sure you keep them sharp as well, let me not even cut my face. But as long as you've got one, maybe one like this, like anything that looks like this, this is a good place to start from. If you're not comfortable with knives, it's always safer to chop on the board, remember that. Have a good knife so you can cut up things and then over time you can expand your knife collection. But if you're not like trying to do up chef life, then I think one of these will be sufficient. So this is my grater. Everybody really should have a grater, but this is really good for like zesting fruits, grater and cheese, grater and crab, carrots, sorry, grater and cabbage to make coleslaw, loads of different things. And then this is kind of like a guillotine side. I think as a basic, you should always have like the four sided one if you can. I'm sure you guys have seen me use this a lot. Predominantly, I use it to squash my garlics, but this is actually a meat tenderizer. So you've got two sides, and when you've got like breasts, or I think sometimes even steaks, whatever, any type of kind of like tough meat that could just do with a bit of softening up, you use this. But I love to use it to squash my garlics and then peel the skin off. That's what you'll see me using it for more time. So this is my scale, it's very basic, I don't really have a fancy one, I do need to upgrade it. And you need a scale for measuring out ingredients. This one, it's got functions for measuring out liquids and also dried goods, so it's got like millilitres, fluid ounces, grams, kilograms and pounds, depending on the type of recipe that you're following. And just, yeah like that and also if you um try to be healthy you calorie count as well you need a like a basic scale to help you convert things into calories so this here is my seasoning bowl or mixing bowl <coughs> i have quite a few actually but it's always good to have at least one it's better to have like one for meats fish and then like cakes or things like that but yeah if you're seasoning up your meats and your fishes or if you're like making pancake mix or something like that it's definitely good to have a bowl so this is a sieve and this is what you use to strain food um separating liquids or even to sift out flour um to kind of get it a lot softer and remove any lumps but you need a sieve basically you're gonna have to like sift flour for cakes or even for fritters or pancakes and when you're cooking your pasta 
you can also use this to strain off the water you can also use a colander but if you've got this then you can do a lot more and we're trying to keep it basic aren't we so these are spoon measures and this is super 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 important when a recipe calls for one tablespoon half a tablespoon a teaspoon don't take something out of your drawer like your cutlery drawer like an ordinary spoon or an ordinary teaspoon because it it differs it's hard to make sure that you're getting it exactly to a teaspoon so if you can get like a like this set then i would highly recommend it this is a tablespoon half a tablespoon a teaspoon half a teaspoon and then a quarter teaspoon i literally use this set every time i'm creating a recipe and i say one tablespoon i mean this tablespoon it doesn't matter where you get them from they should all more or less be the same so this is very very basic and this is just a big spoon it's like a mixing spoon you could use it to serve you can use it to mix when you're doing things like curry goat, rice and peas, jollof rice, stew, whatever, you need a good spoon. You can't be using the little spoons that you've got when you're drinking your soup or something like that. It's just not appropriate. And then you'll get your fingers all up in the food and yeah, so you need a good spoon. This is my measuring jug. So at the moment, this is what I'm using because my parents actually stole the nice Pyrex one that I have. But this is for measuring out your liquids. It's got milliliters on one side and fluid ounces on the other side. I think generally, most people tend to work in milliliters in the UK. This one goes up to 500 max, but you can get ones that are like a liter jug, etc. But this is kind of what you want as a basic. Thank you guys. Hope you guys can see that. Can you see me? <laughs> so this is my hand mixer. Very, very basic. Nothing too, sorry, too fancy. Um, this like, if you're making a cake or you're making a batter or like pancake mix, saltfish fritters or something, even mashed potatoes as well. My brother actually brought me in on that one. It's really, really good. So you don't need to invest too much unless you're like um, baking connoisseur. My one is very basic. It does the job and I've had it for a little while now. So these are a collection of cup measures. These bad boys are actually part of the reason why I made this video because I think particularly in the UK, we're not, we don't do cup measures, but I like cup measures because I just find them very easy and convenient to use. Um, you've got like one eighth cup, quarter cup, third cup, I should show you guys, yeah, third cup, half cup, and then a full cup. I like to Google things on the internet a lot and sometimes I get a lot of American recipes and they will ask me for a cup and this is not an ordinary cup or glass from out of your cupboard, it is a literal cooking cup. So you definitely should get some of these. They're well worth investing in and when if you do decide to create your own recipes, they're really helpful when you're doing things like for the jerk sauce, for example, I just need one big cup of it rather than having to figure out milliliters. It's just long and it's not always necessary. It's also good for, um, like if you're making your pancakes or your fritters and you want them to be all the same size, you can use a cup measure as well. This is a spatula. I prefer to have like a plastic spatula just because I like to use a lot of non-stick type pans. And when you've got like a, a metal spatula, I just feel like it rubs. But this is like when you're frying things, simple basic frying an egg, frying your fritters, doing your pancakes, um, anything in a frying pan that will require flipping over, anything that's gonna be like flat and you wanna be able to turn it over, you definitely need one of these. So guys, that is it. Short and sweet. I'll definitely do some more videos like this, um, with like gadgets, seasonings, etc. But I wanted to keep this one very, very basic for you guys. 
so you can follow the recipes that I've already got online. All of the things that I have shown you in the video today, I've bought predominantly from Amazon or like my local supermarket, Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, Dunelm, you know, like them homeware goods stores. I will list the products down below and I also put them on my blog and then I'll just let you know where I got them from. But a lot of this stuff is, is quite old, so you might not be able to get exactly what I've got, but I will do my best so that we can all be matching and we can be twins. Yay. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, just drop them down below in the comments and I will surely respond when I get the time. Remember that this is very basic and I will be updating and keeping you guys in check. So yeah, I love you guys and I shall see you next time.